With the advent of cheap resin printers with exceptional quality, it seems that FDM printers are now old news. Outdated tech. But is that really the case? In this video, I'm going to be exploring some of the strengths and projects where FDM printers still excel over resin printers. And we're going to be reviewing a new printer from Anycubic. Okay, so here's the deal. Layer lines are terrible, and seeing them on a model totally ruins the look. It seems that they can't be avoided when using an FDM printer, right? But take a look at this tank. This was printed on an FDM printer, and you really can't see any of the obvious layer lines on it. And no, I didn't sand it or coat it in anything. It's all about orientation. You see, layer lines occur along the z-axis of the print. If the surfaces you have on the exterior are the very top of the model, the layer lines don't exist, since the printer extrudes a mostly smooth layer of plastic. By slicing and orienting the parts of your print to be facing up, for the parts that will be most visible, you can achieve amazing results with an FDM printer. Other than the turrets, this Baneblade proxy was printed on an FDM printer. This brings me to my next point, print size. Most affordable resin printers have a small bed, so printing something large is almost impossible without excessive multi-part assembly. Resin is also a lot more expensive for the same volume of PLA, so printing bases or other structural parts of, out of resin seems like a huge waste. I reserve my resin printer for small detailed bits or miniatures. FDM printers have large build plates and volume in which you can print massive models like this one. If you want to print terrain parts, it's a no-brainer. The advantages also come when it comes to post-processing and ease of use. For a modern FDM printer, you mostly just need to make sure the bed is level and you can just start printing. Once the part is done, pop it off the build plate and it's good to go. Now, Anycubic is not sponsoring this video, but they did send me a review copy of the Anycubic Viper. And after spending a few minutes assembling it, it's been pretty easy to get going with it. It comes with a flexible magnetic bed, so I don't have to fuss over scraping prints off the bed. And the printer also comes with auto leveling, so I don't need to fuss about calibrating the first layer. Now it doesn't come without its faults. For one, the spool holder is a bit flimsy, and I had the spool fall off during a longer print. And some of the wires seem to have been loose inside the print head. Seems like it had a faulty contact, and during one of the longer prints it actually failed halfway through. Contacting support, they just instructed me to check the extruder connections. So after taking apart the plastic piece here, I made sure all the connections were nice and snug, and I haven't had any other problems since. Honestly though, for the price, about $300 US, this is a great printer. With the huge build volume, auto leveling, and magnetic build plate, it rivals the Prusa Mark 3S for a fraction of the price. If you're in the market to buy a printer in 2021, take a good look at this one. Now let's take a look at what it's been busy printing. I needed some more tanks to bolster my armored heavy support roster. So in addition to some of the tank kits from GW, I designed some custom proxies I can use alongside my army to make it more unique. I modeled this tank chassis in Fusion 360 and made sure to orient most of my external surfaces so that they would print well on an FDM printer. That means they don't need supports and can be placed right on the build plate. Together with extra parts from my tank sprues and some detailed resin printed parts, I honestly can't tell that any of these were 3D printed. I even printed off some track guards and other bits for my stock Lehman Russ and Chimera, getting those upgrades in style. I think I'll be making a ruined version of these tanks as well to use as terrain pieces. How cool would it be to replace a destroyed tank with its ruined counterpart after it gets blown up on the battlefield? The parts themselves go together quite intuitively. With a little bit of plastic glue, the side pieces get sandwiched together to form the tank treads and sponsons. I'm very pleased with how even the rivet details came out. These are printed on a 0.4mm nozzle, and the half millimeter rivets actually show up great. I made this little bit here to actually print in place, and it has a mechanical hinge for the weapons. As GW tank kits usually come with extra weapon options, I used those on the new tanks to minimize waste. For the turrets, I took the Vanquisher cannon variant from the leftover kit and cut it down to proxy as a battle cannon for the new tank. I also found this other proxy for an executioner plasma turret. And again, using some bits from the Lehman Rust kit, I stuck this kernel on top with a storm bolter. You can never have too many guns. Now to give a lot more character to the tanks, I added stowage in the form of barrels, jerry cans, weapons, and took some time to sculpt some tarps and baggage out of green stuff. Let me know what your thoughts are on FDM printers. Do you have one? Has it been gathering dust? Maybe this inspires you to buy one or even look at them in a new light. 
Now, I think summer is starting to hit us in full swing in the Northern Hemisphere, so don't stay inside. Go out there and enjoy it while it's around. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.